Hey, my name is David Buck, and in this video we're going to learn all about light in Lightroom Classic. But what about dark? Yes, yes, we're going to cover darks too. Lights, darks, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, texture, clarity, anything that has to do with the brightness values in Lightroom. So let's jump right in. So I'm using this photo here because I've done just about everything that I can think to do to it in brightness and darkness. It has a little bit of everything. Unfortunately, kitchens don't look like this. They look like this, uh, but we want them to look like this one. I'm going to go over step by step what we did to this photo to make it the way that it is, and in doing so, explain all the different values and how they're used to manage your lights and your darks within Lightroom. First thing you need to understand is what this picture is right up here. It's got a bunch of lines and it's called the histogram. All this is is a live chart of what's happening to the light in your photo. So the first thing we need to do is explain what luminosity is. Luminosity is the value of light in a photo. So zero is black and 255 is white. And each of the numbers in between there is the level of brightness between black and white. So down here on the left is your black. This would be your zero point and this would be your 255 point. From bottom to top, you're looking at the amount of each of those values in the photo. So we have very few blacks. We have quite a few whites. We have a whole bunch of midtones and we have a whole bunch of highlights. These different value areas are broken down into light ranges. If you hover over the histogram, you'll see that at the bottom we have blacks. Then as we move up, we have a zone of shadows. We have exposure, which is the middle range. We have highlights, which is the upper range. And we have whites, which is the top part. Being able to manage the brightness of the photo in Lightroom has to do with your managing of these different zones within the histogram. Not surprisingly, we have an area right down here below that corresponds. We have exposure, and if you look at the histogram as I hover over each of these items, you'll see the range that's affected. Highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. When information gets piled up on the top range, then that just becomes absolute white and you have no more detail left in that area of the photo. And when they pile up on the left, you have absolute blackness, which means there's no more detail left in the blacks. So predominantly, we want to keep our light values within this area, unless we're intentionally trying to make something white, which just so happens I picked an image where we are going to make some stuff white. So exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks have to do with the actual values within this histogram. So if I take a look at my highlights, if you watch the histogram, I'm moving my highlights towards white. Or if I'm going down with them, I'm moving my highlights towards black. And the same thing with each different one. If I move my shadows towards black, guess what? The shadow area gets moved to black. Now, a fun little feature in Lightroom is that if I click on the shadows here in the histogram and drag, it will do the same thing as the slider. So if I wanted to use the histogram itself to edit, I can certainly do so and make it the way that I want it. But then we have another few items. We have this thing called contrast. If I pull contrast to the left, so down, you'll see that the histogram squishes together. Okay, so it's bringing my lights and my darks closer together in the middle that produces less contrast. If I want more contrast, it's sliding the light values apart. Okay, I'm making my blacks go blacker and my whites go whiter across the entire frame of the image. So contrast works image wide to get lights lighter and darks darker. But then we have these other ones down here as well. We have texture, clarity, and dehaze. So the clarity slider is like contrast, but it only deals with the midtones. So it's spreading the lights and the darks apart like this, but only in the midtones. So you're leaving your, your whites and your blacks alone, and then it's spreading apart the midtones. So as I, as I make that go up, then the midtone sections of the photo are going to look more contrasty, just like we did with the contrast slider for the entire image. Then the texture slider is a little bit more complicated, but basically what it's doing is separating the lights and darks, but only in areas where there are lights and darks beside each other. So if I bring the texture slider up, you see here in the grain of the, the floor, you see the difference between the lights and the darks changing. So you're adding contrast or spreading lights and darks between areas where there are lights and darks close together. Of course, it looks good here in the floor, but when you're adjusting it globally, you got to make sure that uh, how much you make adjustment doesn't make the whole image look bad. So in this case, I can add quite a bit of texture and it looks great. Then we have the tone curve, and the tone curve is the way in which Lightroom views your histogram. So if the changes up here in basic are actually adjusting the histogram, as you see there on the top, 
by using these couple of sliders. If I go to the tone curve, you'll see an underlay of the histogram. But when I make a change to the tone curve, it doesn't actually adjust the histogram below it. Now, it does show up here because this isn't technically a histogram. It's a live preview of what the histogram would be as you're seeing it. So the actual histogram is underneath here. And to show you that, notice here where the highlights are. If I make changes to the highlights, and I come back down here to the tone curve, the highlights change. They were on the right side of the blue, now they're on the left side of the blue. So these are actually changing the, the histogram of the image, whereas the tone curve is the way in which Lightroom is viewing your histogram. So if you want to get more technical on it, the bottom left is the zero value, and the top right is the 255 value. So your, your lights are up here and your darks down here. And the curve is the way in which Lightroom is seeing those items. So what you're actually doing, if this zero value is here at the bottom, it's zero. However, if I tell Lightroom, make the zero value 255, guess what? Those zero values actually become white. You're telling Lightroom, based on this curve, when you see a zero value, actually put in a 255 value. So through here, I'm able to tell Lightroom to adjust a range of brightness based on the curve that I put into the image. And it can be very, very interesting. It can also be very very, very ugly. So again, here in the tone curve, if you don't want to deal with the actual curve, you can go here to the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows zones, just like it has in the histogram, and pull up or down. So if I want the darks, I can pull the darks up. If I, can, if I want the lights down, I can pull the lights down. Additionally, I can click this little button right here and actually affect just the area that I want. So in the dynamic curve, I can add a point by clicking this button saying, hey, I want these values to be brighter, then voila, it just did that. Oh, and I want to do these values higher, and I want to make... Now you're making a new point with each one, so it's really going to mess with your curve, but that's okay. If you want to stay here in this parametric curve, it, it no matter how much you make adjustments to the image, it stays within the lights and the darks and the brights and the shadows, and it doesn't keep adding points for you. If you want complete control over each little section of your image, which we're actually going to do in this photo, you can add as many points here along the line as you want, and you can make adjustments to each of the different areas, or you can lock it into that, and then you can choose this button here and say, hey, I want to add another point right there, and I want to just bring that up just a little bit. Sweet. You can do that. So the tone curve is where you get a lot more individual control within Lightroom to be able to manage your lights and darks. The other light option we have is here in the HSL tab. Under each of the color channels, we have a luminance option. So basically, you can adjust the brightness of each of your different color channels, which, again, gives you another level of control within the photo. So if I didn't want my yellows to be, if I wanted my yellows to be black, or I wanted them to be more towards white, well, guess what? They're, there we go. They're more towards white. My orange is more towards white, and this, and put them all more towards white, and oh my goodness, we're getting all sorts of color luminance in there. But just as an interesting note here, if you had blues coming in the window, which we do right here, you'll notice there's some blues in this section. And you say, I can't see any blues there. Well, if I was to uh, if I was to color pick here, you'd see that it is towards the blue. Okay, so there's definitely some blue in there. So, so that means that I have control over that area with the HSL. So if I took my luminance of my blues of that area, guess what? We've just made them white. Woohoo! So that's another way to get rid of your color casts in a photo to make color simplicity come through so that you're left with fewer colors and more prettiness. So let's go back to the beginning and figure out how we are going to use our light darks, shadows, highlights, blacks to get this image right here. So one thing I want to watch for is I know that these images are going to go to print because the client that I'm delivering them to often puts them into magazine articles. So I want to make sure that, that they're going to print the whites and the darks properly. So I want to make sure that I'm not bringing anything above white and or leaving anything below black. So we're going to deal with that at the end in the tone curve. So as we begin our image adjustments, I want to make the whole image brighter while keeping the rich, dark accents of the appliances. So I'll bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, raise the whites to give a nice white look to the room. Then I'll remove some of the vibrance while boosting the saturation which will bring out the things that are already colorful while minimizing the overall color intensity of the image. In the HSL panel, because I'm bringing the whole image towards white, rather than individually desaturating the mixed color tones in the image, I'm going to raise the luminance of the blue and yellow 
to remove those casts while adding to the overall feel of the image that I'm looking for. In the point curve of the Tone Curve panel, I'm going to raise the mid-tones of the image with a small single point curve, then add points all along the curve to lock it in, and then very specifically adjust the areas I want to protect. So I'll bring the black point up from black just a bit to dark gray. So you see as I pull this top white point, this 255 value point, down, I'm bringing the top highlights to be closer to the next point. So if you look at the top of the counter, I'm kind of leveling that off as to, you know, that's the same brightness, there's no, there's no difference. So I want that just a little bit brighter. And you'll see here on the histogram, I'm pulling in from the end just a little bit. And so what that's doing is physical printers, magazine printers have a certain print range that they can do. They can't, the printers can't print all the way from zero to 255. Maybe it's from six to 248 or something like that. So the top values have to be clipped a little bit in order to make sure that the magazine isn't printing just white and there's no detail left in their photos. So just a, just a little fun note. So we're going to go back to basic here. We're going to deal with our uh, what, what Lightroom calls presence. I want to add a bit of texture, add some clarity, and see it, it makes it look bad pretty quickly because we've already pushed these things quite a ways. So just a little bit of just a little bit on the clarity. Dehaze, we're going to take a look at maybe a little bit less than more. And then just to finish this off, we're going to drop some of our saturation values and colors that we don't want in the image. So bringing back to color simplicity, and I'm pretty happy with that. So we came from there to there. So remember that the histogram is your friend. It's not some scary thing up in the top right corner of Lightroom. Use it, understand it, and go make better photos.